I'm Greg Muffet. I'm a criminal profiler, an author, college professor, and a psychologist. But when it's hunting season, I'm in the woods as much as I can be. Welcome to Southern Hunter. Hi, I'm Greg Muffet and welcome back to Southern Hunter. It's only about four weeks before the beginning of bow season and four weeks after that is the opening of gun season. We've got all of our feeders out, we've got our cameras out, our stands are ready to go. So today what I thought we would do is talk a little bit about getting ready for gun season because most hunters are gun hunters. So today we're going to look at ammunition, we're going to look at different firearms, and take a look at the generalities of what guns are about in terms of hunting. So I'm glad you're back with us on Southern Hunter. Let's get started. I got some really devastating news today. My friend who owns the 240 acres where I bow hunt right next to my property gave me a call. He knew I was about to set up a feeder there and what he told me was they're about to clear cut the property. Now in the past they've cut pines, they've thin cut and they've select cut and I knew eventually that they would be clear cutting those pines. But if I understood him correctly, they're going to clear cut everything. They're going to clear, clear cut all the pines and the hardwoods. And it's in the hardwoods where I've always hunted. So even though in the past they've worked on the pines, it hasn't really affected my hunting area too much. But it looks like, at least for this season, that property is not going to be available to me. I can go there, but there's not going to be any deer there. And what's worse, they're going to start right at the beginning of September, which is right when bow season opens. So, I thought I was going to have several places to hunt this year, but it looks like I might need to step up my plans for the new property because I'm not going to be able to hunt this 240 acres this year. This 22 caliber Marlin is the first firearm I ever bought. I bought it many years ago. It's still in great working condition and I take very good care of it. But when I bought this gun, I didn't know a lot about firearms. And fortunately, with 22 long rifles, there aren't really that many things you need to know. But what we're gonna do today is look at some of the things I've learned over the years about different types of firearms, different types of ammunition, and what you need to know depending on what you're hunting. I've set this uh, display up on the counter so you can get an idea of some comparison. This is a 22 caliber long rifle shell. It's called a rimfire because 22s are the only gun that I know of where the primer is actually on the rim on the outside here. So when the hammer strikes, it fires from here. Almost all other ammunition is center fire where the primer is in the center of the round like you see right there. So you can see 22 caliber, this is a 38 caliber, this is a 30-30, this is a 30-06, and this is a shotgun. The reason I have the shotgun shell sitting here is because most ammunition that you use in long rifles and handguns is measured in caliber. They're either measured in uh, inches, 0 .40, 40 caliber, 0 .38, 38 caliber, or they're measured in millimeters. So a 40 caliber handgun slug is about the same size as a 10 millimeter uh, handgun slug. They're just uh, different ways of measuring. But shotguns are measured in terms of gauge. Now gauge is a very old fashioned uh, term. What it refers to is the diameter. So the diameter of the barrel in this shell right here, uh, this shot shell, is 12 gauge. What that means is 12 lead balls this diameter make up one pound. That's where the phrase comes from. So a 14 gauge, uh, 16 gauge is simply a smaller barrel. It takes more of those little lead balls to make a pound. So we still uh, talk about gauge that way. There's another term you need to know, and that has to do with the weight of this slug that's at the end. So you see this brass part, um, this jacket right here at the top. That's the actual bullet. And they weigh different amounts, and that amount is measured in terms of grain. There are 437 and a half grains to one ounce. 
So most of the ammo you buy on the shelf is a 100 grain to 150 grain, and there's some, uh, sometimes up to 180 grain. Uh, those are pretty standard. So that means in 150 grain uh, slug, it weighs about a quarter of an ounce. So that you can see, these two are different sizes. So the load refers to how much powder is in here. The grain refers to the weight of these bullets. And then the tips are different on each one. That's a hollow tip, that's a hollow tip, that's a solid tip, and that's a solid tip. So the, each of those tips do something different. Now if you look at these two shells here, in terms of diameter, I don't know how well you can see this, but they're actually almost identical in terms of how big a round they are. 30 caliber. So when I reload, in fact, 30 caliber slugs work in either one of these shells, but they clearly are different. How they vary is in this casing, how much powder can go into each one of these areas. So this is a 30-06, and we can always tell what kind of round it is by looking at the bottom, because printed on the bottom is the type of uh, um, caliber that it is. So we know that this 30-06 round is a bigger shell, bigger casing, and won't fit in this gun, and vice versa. So while a 38, a 380, and a 357 are all very close, in some guns they're interchangeable, but in other ones they're not. With shot shells, they all look basically the same. They come in varied lengths, and for you gun experts out there, almost everything that we're going to talk about today has some exceptions, but this is an overview. So there's a length. This is a three and a quarter inch length shell. So it's filled with little BBs, and different size BBs are good for different things. So you can have very, very small BBs, which is a, a field load, typically it's a practice round, all the way up to a solid slug, which would, would fill this entire area. In other words, the entire 12 gauge is one lead ball. And that makes for a lot of mass. So if you're shooting a large animal like deer up in the north, I think in Indiana, in fact, I think you can only hunt with primitive weapons or with shotguns. So they use a slug. If you're hunting birds, you're using a turkey load or a dove load, which is a much smaller uh, BBs, but there are a lot of them. So they spread out in a pattern. Since I don't hunt too much with shotguns except for turkey season, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that today, but that gives you an idea of what these are about. Another thing to think about with firearms is the length of the barrel. You've seen this gun before. That's the gun that I take out as my snake gun. And I told you the first time I introduced you to it that I don't need to shoot more than about 8 to 10 feet. Anything further than that, I can run away. So this is a short range gun, and the shorter the barrel, the less accuracy you have at a distance. This is a fairly old fashioned gun, and police officers used to carry that a long time ago. You notice that very long barrel. That's a 357. Um, it's a very heavy gun, but that long barrel makes it much more accurate at a distance. These two weapons right here have barrels that are about the same length, but after about 25 yards, you start losing accuracy. Most people don't shoot very well anyway, but as far as shooting for competitive nature or shooting for hunting, most hunting guns that are handguns have very long barrels for this reason. And even though these are handguns, we can say the same thing about rifles and shotguns. The longer the barrel, the more accuracy you have at a long distance. So if you've ever seen a sniper movie, you know that those guys are shooting uh, long rifle barrels that are very, very long. So you can see the length of this barrel. This is a 28 inch shotgun barrel and this is the gun I use when I dove hunt. That long barrel like we discussed gives us more accuracy at a distance. This is 12 gauge just like we saw before and I'll use um, a field shot almost shooting dove. But you can look at this my turkey gun which I showed you in another episode. That barrel is much shorter and the reason this barrel is shorter is when you're turkey hunting um, you're only shooting maybe 40, 50 yards, so you don't need that long distance shot like you do when you're bird hunting, uh, small birds like dove. So even though this is almost exactly the same gun, it's a Remington 870, has a different barrel, and it also has a choke on the end, and this choke is made specifically for turkey, which closes the pattern down smaller for that short range. So the shorter the barrel, and especially with no choke, the wider the pattern is going to be. 
So if you've ever watched police shows, they use guns like this with a pistol grip and often with a barrel that's only about 18 inches long. That gives a, a very wide pattern and they call it a hallway gun because it's very good for shooting down hallway and hitting anything that's in the way. This is a 50 caliber muzzle loader. It's called a primitive weapon. And the reason it's called primitive weapon, instead of shooting uh, a cartridge like uh, I've been showing you, what it shoots is actually a slug that goes in the end, the muzzle, that's the way you load, just like in the older days. So there's a ramrod, just like in old guns. But don't be deceived. This is not primitive. This has a rifled barrel, which means it swirls. So it's like throwing football. So if that football spins, you get a much better accuracy on it. In the olden days, they shot a lead ball. I don't see how anybody hit anything back in the Civil War days. But with this uh, muzzle loader, it's as accurate at 100 yards as my 30 6 But during primitive weapons, which is the week before gun season opens, I can shoot this, uh, this rifle. And I do every year. I muzzle load hunt only one week a year, and that, that, that's just that week of uh, primitive weapons. So the way this works is you'll load 50 caliber. You can see the end of this is a huge, huge barrel. So 50 caliber is way bigger than any of my other guns. But you load powder in the end, and you can get powder in various forms. I use uh, little cartridges, they're little round cylinders. I'll drop two or three of those in there depending on what I want to shoot. Then put the slug down in behind it, and then a primer goes in this area right here so that then I can fire, firing pin strikes the primer, ignites the powder, shoots the slug. So let's talk about action for just a minute. No, not that kind of action. The action on a firearm refers to the area of the gun where the action happens. In other words, where the shell is manipulated. So my 30 6 is a single action, single shot, bolt action firearm. That means every time I pull this bolt back, the shell comes out, I have to individually put another shell in and lock it down. Single action, bolt action is uh, generally better at long distances. So um, when you put a clip in or you have semi-automatic, you tend to lose some of your accuracy at a distance. The disadvantage is if you want to fire a second round, you've got to pop the shell out, put a new one in and lock it back down and re-aim before you can shoot a second time. Fortunately for me, I almost never miss with my gun. So it's been rare that I've had to fire a second shot anyway. So that's a single action. What you see here is my son's firearm. This is a bolt action, just like mine, but it has a clip that goes in the bottom. So this clip holds five rounds. So he can put this clip in, take a shot, and when he slides the bolt back, the empty casing ejects. He throws forward and a new shell is there, so it's much faster. And you don't have to take your eye off your target. So if you're shooting something, especially like hog, where you might need two rounds uh, or more, that's, this is a much more desirable firearm. Now similar to that is a lever action. So that means the action occurs with a lever instead of a bolt. This is my hog gun, and I like this gun because it holds several rounds. I can pull the lever back, eject a shell, drop a new one in very, very quickly. So I bought this gun specifically to hog hunt. This is also why people like to hunt hog with AR-15s or AKs or some other semi-automatic weapon like that because the clip holds several rounds. Um, hog are very dangerous. I've had them charge me before. In fact, uh, about a year ago, I was hog hunting. I shot a hog with my rifle. He charged me. I didn't have time to load another round, so I pulled my handgun and shot him twice with my handgun. So this is a, a very desirable weapon for hog hunting or a semi-automatic. Now I've used that phrase a couple of times. In most places in the United States, fully automatic weapons are not legal, or if they are legal, you have to have a special permit for them. So most people have uh, weapons that are either single shot or they're semi-automatic. That means when you pull the trigger, a shell ejects and a new one automatically loads. So this Marlin 22 that you saw is semi-automatic. It holds 18 rounds. When I pull this down and load around, 
every time I pull the trigger until I run out of ammunition, a new round goes in. So deciding on the kind of thing you're going to be hunting is going to determine a little bit about what you want in terms of uh, action, whether you want bolt, lever, single shot, if you want a clip, or whatever. I called this up on my computer because I wanted you to see uh, as an example of what happens with each round. Again, this is exceedingly complicated and you can get apps for your phone that can help you compute this based on the round that you're firing, the load and the grain and so forth. But um, most people zero in at 100 yards. Interestingly, with my 30-06, it's the same level at 100 yards as it is at 25 because what happens is the round goes straight out, slightly elevates, and then it begins to fall off. So at 100 yards, it's the same as 25. So I can zero in really at 25 yards and be on target. Not all rounds do that. So over time, uh, gravity is gonna pull that slug toward the earth, and the further out it goes, the, the more distance it's gonna fall. So if you're shooting three, 400 yards or further, you're talking about a, a long distance that it's dropping. You may be shooting, uh, aiming actually, a foot or two above your target um, as opposed to aiming right at it. We're not going to spend any time in this episode on scopes, but I called this up on my computer because my Nikon scope has um, a BDC, bullet drop computation in it. So each one of these circles that you see, I can actually see in my scope. Now, where it gets very, very complicated is I zero in at 100 yards. The next dot down is not 200 yards. You have to compute a whole bunch of stuff. So it's super complicated um, and it makes you appreciate what a rifleman can do. This is an AR-15. This is a perfect gun for hog hunting because it's semi-automatic and every time you pull the trigger, another round goes into the chamber. One of the criticisms of these uh, firearms is that they typically have high capacity magazines. You can get them a lot bigger than this one. But if you're hog hunting, and out west especially, where they may shoot 30 or 40 hogs a night, this is exactly what you need. But one of the things I want to show you about this weapon is the caliber. Remember we talked about 22s and 38s and 357s and 30-06 and so forth. This is a 223 so it's about a 22 caliber so in other words that's a 22 caliber shell if you look at the end it's almost exactly the same but the big difference of course is in the casing and the load so the grain of this bullet is much bigger and the casing is much bigger that's why you don't go hog hunting with that you'll just make hogs mad but you can go hog hunting with that since I almost never shoot my rifle long range, reloading is really not an accuracy question for me. It's more of a consistency question. So reloading my own ammo, I'm getting more consistency from one round to another. But now that I have this property, my longest shot's going to be a little bit more than 250 yards. So I may start loading for distance and accuracy as well. So let's take a few minutes and look at how the reloading process works. So let's talk about ammo for just a minute. I'm going to reload some ammo today. We can buy ammo. It's cheaper uh, basically to buy it than to buy this equipment. Um, but when you reload, you can get exactly what you want. And I reload one at a time. You can buy multi-stage um, loaders. This is a single stage loader, which is fine. You can do one bullet at a time in one stage. So we deprime, we resize, um, we powder fill, we put the slug in, all in different stages. But I like that because it causes us to go slow so we don't make mistakes and we can be very, very precise. So I'm going to take a few minutes and show you a little bit about how this process works. But keep in mind, I'm not a professional reloader. I've been doing this for a few years, but um, I'm still kind of a novice at it. But I really like loading my own ammo. So if it's not for you, go to the store, buy your own ammo. If you're shooting short range, almost anything you buy in the store is going to be fine. So anything 100 yards or less, you'll be in good shape. So let's take a look. So that's all we have time for today. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you found this interesting. There is so much to learn when it comes to handguns and long guns and shotguns and different kinds of ammunition. I'm hoping this introduction has given you something to think about. The more you learn about trajectories and temperature and humidity and uh, windage and distances, the more you can appreciate the job that snipers do. Lots of math. So, 
I'm Greg Moffitt and I am a Southern Hunter and I'm glad you joined us. Please make sure to look us up on the web at southernhunter.org. And don't forget my other dream, hunting with Ted Nugent and playing guitar with Eric Clapton. So if you see either of those guys, let them know for me. We'll see you next time.